Hey guys, thanks for joining us tonight for our Team Ignite March call. I can't believe we're already three months into the year already, almost a full quarter in. It's crazy. I'm so excited to talk to you guys tonight about something that I've kind of been, so to say, researching a little bit lately is I really wanted to get more into the law of attraction. And, you know, I'm a huge Shalene Johnson fan, right? We all love Shalene. Um, so, like, finding your lifers, right? Because that's what we want to do here is we want to find those people that are going to stick with us no matter what. Like, Becky, you'd probably never consider quitting Beachbody, right? Like, it's something you're going to do for the rest of your life because of how you feel and how it makes you feel every day, the personal development aspect, you know, all the accountability you get from it, not to mention, you know, the financial benefits that you're receiving from it now as well. So that's what we want to create. We want to create more Beckys and more Sharons. And, you know, we want to hear, we want to create more people that are going to stick with us no matter what. Even when it gets hard, I am a lifer. I love it. <laughs> so if you're not on here right now, comment below this recording to let me know that you're a lifer. Um, but that's really what I wanted to focus this call on tonight because I think it's definitely something we have an opportunity with, right? Like it's hard to get people to that level. And I think it really starts with showing them results because once they see results, and it's got to be in that first like. 21 30 days that they see results like that's what we have to do we have to first help them see results and then once we do that then they're kind of hooked right they want more they want to be able to continue to see those results and then that's when they kind of move through that process of possibly becoming a challenger from your clean eating group and then going into you know doing a business opportunity event possibly becoming a coach or a discount coach so that's really what I want to talk to you guys about tonight. So let me just pull up my PowerPoint here real quick. Let me get that going. And let me share my screen with you girls. I did this the other day and it worked really well. And now, behind the screen. I don't remember how I did it. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Coming back at you. One second. Opening too many screens. <laughs> I'm so bad at doing PowerPoints in my calls. <laughs> Sorry, guys. One day I'll get it. Here we go. Can you guys see it? Everybody see my PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. So creating lifers and duplicating your success. So what I want you guys first to do is get out a piece of paper and a pen if you don't already have one. And I want you to write down... 10 attributes or characteristics you would want in an ideal coach. So this just gives you an idea of what my 10 are, right? So just real quick, think of 10 things that you would like in a perfect coach, your ideal coach, right? So for me, you know, I want someone that's going to motivate me. I want someone that's going to lead by example, you know, show me that it works. And I want someone that's going to be honest and real and that's going to not just show me, you know, all the fluffy stuff and all the pretty stuff, but also talk about their struggles and how they overcame them because that will help me, right? I want somebody that's positive, like negativity doesn't motivate me in any way, shape or form. I can't stand excuses, so I don't want to hear them from my coach. Um, I want somebody that's organized so that they can help me become more organized because that sometimes can be a challenge for me. I want somebody that's going to provide value and that is going to help me along my journey. Um, I love recognition. So I like being recognized for my successes and I like shout outs. And so I want somebody that's going to do that for me and rewards. I love reward. Like I'm motivated by rewards. That's just something that um, really motivates me. I want somebody that's confident and empowering and that is not going to listen to my excuses and that is going to push me when I need to be pushed. I want somebody that's passionate about what they do and just really loves it and like couldn't see themselves doing anything else. And I want somebody that's focused so that they can help me stay focused on my goals and what I need to do to get there. So when you're done jotting down those 10, just kind of keep them to the side because we're going to pull them back out at the end of our call. So we've talked about this coach avatar before. Um, and I'm not going to go into 
total detail with it because I think most of you have been on calls before where I've talked about it. But if you haven't seen this before, um, I'll double check if it's not posted in the files section in the Team Ignite page, I will post it there for you. But it's something you really need to sit down and do. So if you haven't done this yet, I'll post the PDF. You can print this exact form out and you can do this. But you need to figure out who your avatar is. You need to figure out who that person that you're talking to on social media is because you don't want to talk to everybody, okay? That's when you just all are all over the place. You want to speak to one specific person every single time that you share on social media. You want to speak to that person that is your ideal coach or your ideal customer. So, you know, you want to know what their goals and values are. Basically, you want to think about who were you before you started Beachbody. Who were you before you became a coach, right? Because that's basically who you want to talk to. So like what kind of books were you into? Magazines, blogs, websites, um, your marital status, number of children, where do you live, what's your favorite quotes, different things like that. What are your challenges? What are your pain points? What are your objections to the sales? What is, who else has a role in the purchase process? So you really need to write all these down if you haven't done this before. So my ideal customer or coach um, you know, before I started Beachbody, I see Sharon laughing over there. Don't I need these shirts though? The hot mess mama and the little hot mess. That's like me and Ty all over it. <laughs> I need to find out where I can buy these. Um, but like this is me before Beachbody. Okay. I was a career woman. I was working full time. I had a one-year-old. Ashlyn doesn't quite look like that, but uh, you know, I had a one-year-old at the time and I was trying to balance being a career, having my career. Um, being a mom, all my household duties, being a wife, I was sleep deprived. I hated my life. I was stressed out. And, you know, I kind of like looked like this all the time, you know, with my eye mask slamming pillow over my head. In days when I wasn't at work, I was running errands and running around like crazy. And I really just wanted someone to tell me I was pretty and take me to Target, right? Like, I still do. I love that shirt. So that's like was something else I thought was like, this is totally me. But this is my customer, right? But this is all you guys too, right? Don't you just want somebody to tell you you're pretty and take you to Target? I mean, that's our tribe, right? And I mean, now I take a little bit of who I am now and who I connect with now. And it's not just those people, that person that I used to be, but it's the person I am now. Like juggling Tyler, he is my little hot mess and I'm a hot mess mama. And it is what it is. And you know, I used to be so stressed out about it and struggle with it so much and think that, you know, I had to like post all these perfect pictures and, you know, always be perfect on social media and not let anybody see my downfalls and what a freaking disaster my days were sometimes. And the minute I stopped that, and the minute I kind of just aired all my dirty laundry, and I don't air all my dirty laundry, right? Like I keep some things private, but... Everybody who follows me knows that I have a crazy kid that doesn't let me do what I need to do. That is, you know, doing this. I got a dog that's jumping out of windows. You know, but like people can relate to me because of that. Because my life is great. Because that's life, right? That's, that's who we are. And like is going to attract like, right? So I'm going to attract people that are just like me. When I'm posting like this, when I'm sharing like this, people are gonna relate with me because I'm being real. And I'm gonna tell you, that's when my business changed and when I had to stop chasing people and people started coming to me was when I started being myself and I started being real and just not caring what other people thought. I mean, just like be silly, be fun. Like how can you take some kind of chaos or craziness that's going on in your day and like turn it around into a positive or into some way that it's going to help somebody or be a value to somebody. Like stop worrying about what other people think about you and your posts. Like my dad once told me what other people think of you is none of your business. And it pretty much was some of the best advice that I've ever gotten. And it's true. Like who cares? Like the people that jump on your bandwagon, are going to be those lifers and are going to be those people that want to continue on this journey with you and those haters they are only going to hate for so long and then they're going to see what you're doing and then they're going to want to jump on the bandwagon too <laughs> don't overthink it like post with intention and post from the heart and don't be afraid to share your story over and over again because so often they think we're like oh well i've already shared those before and afters you know i don't need to do it again becky is an awesome example of this she consistently is sharing her journey over and over again. And you know what? Every time she shares it, I share her journey too. And I'll share it because, you know, 
there's going to be people that didn't see that. You know, only like 20% of your Facebook friends see your posts, right? So there's a whole other 80% that aren't seeing every time you post. So maybe some of that 80% sees it the next time you post. You never know. And if what you're posting can inspire just one person, right? Can inspire one person to start working out or one person to start getting healthy, then it was all worth it, right? Because you help that one person just from you sharing your story. So do it over and over again. I definitely recommend you to reach out to your coach and ask them to do a social media audit. Ask them to look through your page and see, you know, can you tell that you're a health and fitness coach without being like icky salesy, right? Like there's a good way to do it. You could go to my page and you could see I'm posting about healthy things. I'm posting about personal development. I might be posting about my workout, but I'm not like spamming my Beachbody website. I hardly ever post my website on my um, Facebook page. Sometimes I will, but hardly ever. I'm not posting my Beachbody link or anything. I might be posting links to my Who Knows Guy Fitness where it has some kind of value, like recipes or my blog or something like that. Um, does your cover photo show who you are? So can they go look at your cover photo and see like you're a mom, you're a wife, you know, mine even says hot mess mama on it. I just redesigned it. You know, it says I'm a coach. Um, it says all the things that I am and that's what's important to me. You know, there's that crazy picture of me saying all I need is Shakeology and mascara. Like that's me, right? So is your profile picture just of you? It really should be. It should be just you so people know who you are and it should be something that reflects you and your business. So, you know, mine, I'm wearing a girl boss shirt in my profile picture or just a simple headshot of you. So can someone tell your fitness coach just by looking at your page? How are you sharing? So this is really important because you need to think about how you're sharing your progress and in which way are you doing it? We just talked a little bit about this. Like, are you being salesy? Are you posting your beach body link? Um, are you teaching your coaches the right way to share so that your coaches know too, because it's not just about what you can do, right? But it's about duplicating that success. It's about teaching those that are on your team and on your, in your downline the right way to do this. Like when they start out as a coach, that's the first thing everybody wants to go and do is, I just signed up as a Beachbody coach, here's my link. Like, back it up. Let's make sure our coaches know like not to do that. Don't get me wrong, guess who did that when they first signed up as a coach? Yep, me all over the place. You know, we've all done it, but we know now that we shouldn't. So let's teach our coaches that because that kind of turns people off, right? We've all gotten those salesy, like icky emails or, you know, our customers have from another coach that like are like icky and, you know, we don't, that makes us uncomfortable and you don't want to join somebody's team that's like that. And you don't want to be a part of that. Um, are you being relatable? Are you being real? Are you being vulnerable? when you're sharing, like you don't have to be perfect. Like I am just as bad as anyone else with this. You know, I will sit and like stare at a picture for like an hour and be like, no, I don't like it. And then take another one and then take another one. If you just gotta stop and you just gotta take the selfie, put your little word swag on and post the damn picture and just be done with it. Instead of obsessing about it, it's just like, I'm just, it's, that's me. I'm sorry. I need to take my own advice here because it's hard, right? It's hard to put ourselves out there when we're not fully face makeup. Are you taking a picture of me right now, Becky? <laughs> um, make sure you insta it if you are. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, it's, it's hard to do, but people are going to relate to you more when you're real. So the law of attraction, I'm um, listening to a book right now called The Attractor Factor. I think it's by Joe Vitalis. You can actually Google it and find it free online. I wish I would have known this before I paid for it, but you can find it. Um, the PDF is free, and then I think you can even find the audio free online too. Um, so check it out. It's definitely worth listening to. It talks a lot about the law of attraction, where basically like whatever you're putting out into the universe is what you're going to get back. So when you're putting out positivity, you're going to get positivity back. When you're putting out negativity, you're going to get negativity back. Basically talking about how your excuses become your belief. And this has been a huge thing for me. Like I, if you ever have done training with me, you know, like 
I don't listen to excuses. I, I just don't. I don't think there's any room for excuses. Like, I don't have the time. I was too tired. You know, I have this going on. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. I know we all juggle a lot. Some of us juggle full-time jobs. Some of us juggle crazy kids and dogs all day. Like, we all have our own responsibilities. But at the end of the day, if you are just giving yourself excuses over and over again, you're creating your relief up that, right? You're creating your life based upon your unconscious, whether you know it or not. That's how your life is created. So something that I try to do is I'll take my excuse, like what I want to make an excuse, and I'll turn it around so that it can be a goal or an action I can take. So for example, let's just say, you know, I didn't hold my diamond drink this week because so-and-so went inactive right? That's an excuse, right? I didn't hold my diamond because this coach went out active. So instead of seeing that and thinking that, what I'm going to do is say, turn that around. I'm going to focus this month on adding two new coaches to each leg so that I can make my diamond more solid, right? So then I'm going to say that in my head on paper, whatever I need to do, write it down so that I'm not using this as an excuse. The same thing, like if you have a challenger that is struggling and really upset that, oh my God, I only lost two pounds in this last round of 21 day fix. I thought I was going to lose 10 to 15 pounds in these last three weeks. You know, it doesn't work. Okay. Well, let's sit down and look at what we can control, right? What are, how can we turn that around and state it as a goal or an action? So instead of focusing on that weight and that number that you can't control, focus on the nutrition plan, right? So let's turn that around. I'm going to focus on following the nutrition plan the best I can, making healthy decisions every day and getting my workout in no matter what. So by retraining your mind, just like how when we do personal development, we retrain ourselves to think more positive, right? This is going to be a way to be rid your excuses. So turning them around and stating them as positives. Ask yourself, are your excuses real or are they imagined? So <laughs> is this something you can get past? Because if it's something that you can get past, then it's an imagined excuse. Has anyone else ever gotten past this excuse? Then it's an imagined excuse. You kind of got to like give your brain a reality check. Ask yourself what you can do and what you would do if you had no excuse, right? So what if you didn't have this excuse? What would be possible? And that right there is the answer to your biggest goal. When you leave all of your excuses behind, you'll be able to see your true self, what you want, and be able to pursue it. So it's really a way to take conscious control of your life. Our lives are really based upon perception. So if we focus on what we lack, guess what? We're going to lack more, right? And we're going to have suddenly these excuses become these roadblocks within our life. And if we focus more on the positivity and that we have this abundance, you know, abundance of potential customers, abundance of potential coaches, abundance of success club points, whatever it may be, abundance of people we can help. Guess what you're going to have an abundance of? <laughs> people that you can help. People that you can change their lives. Like I said before, you'll stop chasing them and they'll start chasing you because this is going to be what you're putting out. I'm, I'm like a big advocate of the universe. You can think what you want about this, but I'm going to tell you guys, it works. It really does. When you are constantly staying positive and you're forcing your unconscious to be positive no matter what, and you're not making excuses for anything, and you're taking control of your life, and you're taking control of your business, your life will change and your business will change. Confidence is key. So on a scale of one to 10, I want you guys to write down right now, how do you feel about this opportunity being able to truly change someone's life on a scale of one to 10? Write, write down real quick. So did any, was anybody at a 10? No, no one was at a 10. What? No. So until you're at a 10, <laughs> There, there will be a doubt, right? There will be, people will see 
that you, you doubt this in some way and they're not going to join you. So you're not going to see success in this business until you really believe in it 110%. Your business really starts with you and your confidence in it. So how do you gain more confidence? Personal development, right? If you're not growing and you're not learning, you're, you're sorry, if you're not learning, you're not growing. So you should always be doing personal development. And I'm not just talking business development. I'm talking about working on whatever is your biggest opportunity. And how do you, you know, you don't know all the answers. I don't know all the answers, but you know what? Google's my best friend. When you guys come to me and ask me a question, what do you think I do? Nine times out of ten, I Google it, right? Um, and I might find some training video. If I don't really answer, I'll find some training video that does have the answer. And I'll send you that. You know, the FAQs. We have coach FAQ, FAQs. Utilize those. Like, teach your coaches about Google. Teach your coaches about the FAQ so that you're not constantly holding their hand and walking them through it. And then you just do the basics. Like, really, that's what this is. You need to just do the basics in your business. And by you doing the basics, you're going to gain more confidence. The more you invite and the more you connect, the better you're going to get at it and the more comfortable you're going to feel at it. And just go out there every day and just try to make a difference in someone's life because that's what this is really about, right? And by doing that and by having those success stories behind you, to show people, like, this works. You have your story. You have customer stories to show. Like, that's how people are going to want to join you. And that's how people are going to become lifers. So you signed up a coach. So now what do you do, right? So you welcome them to our team page. Everybody should be added into the Team Ignite page. You need to send them a welcome email or a Facebook message right away with a welcome video and set up a call right away with them too. Really find out their why. Find out their goals. Find out if they have any questions. Because you making this one-on-one -on -one connection with them is really going to be what helps them get through that first week when they're overwhelmed with everything and they want to quit. The same thing with challengers. I know Becky was talking about this. We had a call yesterday. And she was talking about how with her new challenger, she's sending them a little personalized note. You know, she said when they buy a challenge pack, just welcoming them and giving them her information. And then she's getting them on the phone and she's talking to them or she's, you know, messaging them and making sure their first workout went okay, making sure they know how to use on demand, making sure they know how to use it, make it good shape. Because if they don't, guess what? You're going to lose them. They're not going to stay with you because they don't know how to use on demand. They, you know, don't know where their workout calendar is, how to find it, don't know where to find the nutrition plan. You have to make sure you walk them through all this. And the same thing from a coach perspective. Get them connected to training. If they're a challenger, get them connected to a challenge group right away and empower them. Stop holding their hands and stop answering every question right away that they ask you. Like, you can give it some time where they can go find the answer themselves. You need to create a team culture. So we talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but, you know, starting your own team page, hosting weekly team calls, and even if it's, you know, you and two other coaches that are on your team, you know, if you're a number one coach and you have two coaches below you, get on the call and talk about your why. Corey and I were talking about this the other, yesterday. You know, get on the team calls together and talk about your why. Why are you doing this? Because guess what? Listening to other people's why is going to motivate you. It's going to inspire you. It's going to draw something inside of you. Talk about your goals. There's so many things you could talk about on those team calls. It doesn't have to be like a structured training like this that I do. It doesn't have to be your weekly team calls. Just get together and create this culture and this family so that when things get hard, they don't leave. They stay because they're part of the family and they know that you're there to support them no matter what. Lead by example. Like, are you leading a success club every month? If you're not, how can you expect your coaches to do so? So it's got to be something that you're showing them that it works and you're showing them that it's possible. Has anybody ever done the gems before or heard of the gems before? I know, Becky, you have. Um, understanding gems will help you become a better coach and a better leader. I'll post, um, uh, I think it might be in the TV Night page under files. If not, I can post something about it. Um, I have a pamphlet that will help you understand. It's basically different attributes of each person. And if you've never taken the gem test yourself, I would definitely recommend it. I'll find it and post it on the thread of this call. Um, so you can understand what motivates you. And when you understand people's gems, then you can understand how to motivate them better. And it really will help you become a better coach and also a better leader. So 
I say this all the time, but what we want for others doesn't work unless they want it for themselves. Like you can't want something more than somebody else does. You can guide them and you can lead them and you can give them the tools, but at the end of the day, it's really up to them to do the work. Like we can't go in somebody's house and do the workout for them and eat healthy for them and drink their shake farm, right? We can't, we can just lead them the best we can. So you guys can screenshot this once this is all up because I think this is good to, a good reminder. Like you need to do a reality check. Hang on, we just oh, lost it. Oops. And I lost my screen. Hang on. Right when I was getting to the good stuff. All right, hang on, guys. Sorry. Um, oh, people. Can you guys still see my PowerPoint? Mm hmm Okay. From current side. Do you see it now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So are you doing this four vital behaviors every day? Are you posting three to five times a day? Are you being salesy? Are you trying to sell other products? Like we can't anymore. So if you're in another MLM, you gotta choose. It's either Beachbody or your other MLM. Um, you can't be promoting both anymore. You need to not post stock images or your beach body link. Like it needs to be photos of you. You need to relate. Do you have a transformation story that you're consistently sharing? Are you being transparent and vulnerable? Are you being you? Are you running monthly challenge groups? Oh, why is he doing that? Sorry, guys. I try to like do this cool animation with my things and it's just messing me up. I won't do that anymore. I'm trying to make it all pretty and cool. I get techie and it just goes bad. <laughs> Are you hitting success club every month? Are you joining into team calls, the national wake up call every single week? Are you making that a priority? Have you completed all the trainings and completed every single assignment in them? Are you addressing your fears and stepping outside of your comfort zone? Because if you're not doing this, how can you expect your coaches to? Are you engaged with your coaches and challengers every single day? Are you participating like a challenger in your groups? Are you checking in with your Shakeology? Are you checking in with your workout every single day? Are you answering your own questions? Like when you're telling them, what are your goals for this challenge? Are you posting what your goals are too? Like being a challenger in your group. Do you have a clear understanding of your story? Like if you sat down and like really thought about your elevator story, like what you could say to somebody in five minutes or less on your beach body story, why you do what you do, have you written out your goals, created a vision board, and shared them with your team? Are you on track with your business? And are you digging into your why? Can somebody tell me what the common denominator that they see here is? What is it? You, you right? See, now it wants to do it again. Oh yeah, no more animation in my, in my slideshows. <laughs> so, skill plus effort equals success. More knowledge does not equal success, but more action does equal success. So you really need to make sure that you don't go into management mode. Like once you have a team and once you start having coaches underneath you, like a lot of people want to start working with them and training them and helping them move their business forward and they forget about theirs. They forget about their front end, front end activity. And then what happens a lot is these coaches go inactive for whatever reason. And then all of a sudden you go from a diamond coach down to an emerald coach, right? And now you haven't been doing your business. You haven't been hitting success club. You haven't been adding coaches. So now you, you drop back. So what you really need to do is make sure, and I think this goes until after you're at a five-star level. So you need to really spend 80% of your, of your time on the basics, on your front end business, on those power hours, on your four vital behaviors. And then you spend the other 20% of your time and your team on trainings, on the frills and the flux, you know, your pretty Instagram photos, your website, your blogs. But what comes down to is that's all the fun stuff, right? That's all the stuff we love to do and love to spend time on. But it's not the stuff that drives our business forward right now. It might drive our business forward later, right? The blogs might drive people to our website, which might create more customers for us in the long run. But what we need to do right now is focus on what we can do today to help people. And that's gonna be on those power hours. I had a lot of um, fun little um, equations here for you guys tonight. Purpose plus passion equals profit. So stop depending on other people's energy. Stop looking for other people to light your fire and show you how to do it. You need to take responsibility of your own business and your own success. You have so many resources at 
at your fingertips. Like use those and take advantage of them. Did anybody watch? I know Becky did because she tagged me in it, but um, Danielle and Tony did a training on the Beachbody Champions page um, about Beachbody On Demand All Access and how it compares to Netflix. And oh my gosh, it was kind of mind blowing. Like I watched it this morning, like take 20 minutes and watch it because they really will give you so many tips to use to speak to your customers and so many ways for you to position Beachbody On Demand, the All Access Pass, and why it's important. This is a tool, this is a resource that we're given. I was, I think I was talking to Corey last night about this. I pretty much recommend the All Access Challenge Pack to every single person now. The only time I wouldn't is if they live in the middle of nowhere and they have hardly any Wi-Fi connection. That is the only way that I would recommend them to get the BB. Otherwise, for basically a little bit more, you know, $50 more than a regular challenge pack, they're going to get everything. Beck, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just posted in the team page before the call um, all the videos from the champions page, and the third video is Danielle Natoni. So just okay. go to the team page. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing those, Becky. I appreciate that. Um, but definitely watch that, and it will talk to you about how you can position this and, and why it's important because this is going to be where your life first come from, right? She talks about there's 86 million people that subscribe to Netflix, right? And they don't just subscribe for one show, right? They're watching all sorts of different shows on it, and that's just how the on-demand all-access cast will work for you and your customers as well. Utilizing training groups, utilizing the back office, we have so much tools and training for you guys that – if you're not constantly doing trainings and learning and bettering yourself and your business, that's why you're not moving forward in your business is because you need to take the initiative to do it. Yes, we have training groups. We're not going to do the trainings for you. You have to watch the videos. You have to do the activities. And like, it's kind of frustrating because we don't see a lot of this happening. Like we see very few people that are actually going all in with these training groups. And we put a lot of work into creating them for you guys so that you have the ability to move your business forward. So take like the next 30 days and commit to yourself to go all into a training group. And I guarantee you, your business will change because of it. And you know, when everything gets stressful, you got to go back to your why, right? Why did you become a coach? Why are you still here today? Because you could have quit at any time, right? But why are you still here? What is your purpose? And you put that together with your passion, and then that's where the profit will come in. We create our own reality. You know I'm big on this. So I want you guys to look back at the list that you made at the beginning of the call, right? For your ideal coach. And what I want you guys to do when we get off this call or now is number them on where you feel like you fall one to 10 based upon 10 being the highest and one being the lowest. So I kind of went through and read myself as far as like motivational. I think I'm pretty motivational, maybe a little too, sometimes a little too tough on people, but that's how I lead. You love me or hate me. <laughs> um, I lead by example. I think I'm pretty good. You know, I follow my nutrition plan and my workouts about 90% of the time I stay on track. Y'all know I'm honest and real, so <laughs> I probably could have given myself 10 there, but we'll go with a nine. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty positive. You know, I, I don't really do excuses anymore. So I think, um, you know, I try to keep negativity out as much as possible. You know, organization is probably, and being focused is probably like my biggest downfalls because I get distracted by shiny objects and I start on one thing and then another and I'm like that in my workouts. I'm like that with everything. Um, so I gave myself sevens there. Provide value. I think I'm pretty good at providing value. Could be better. Recognition, same thing. Like, I feel like I recognize pretty well, but maybe it could be better there. Um, I'm pretty confident, and I feel like I'm pretty empowering. Um, so I gave myself a 10 there, and y'all know I'm really passionate. So. so why I want you to do this and why I wanted you to do this activity is because this is going to be who you're going to attract, right? So you're never going to attract someone that's a better leader than you are, right? So if you're, you know, not very confident, you're probably not going to attract someone that's more confident than you, right? If you're not very passionate about what you do, you're probably not going to attract somebody that's more passionate than you. 
So take these areas that maybe you gave yourself like a seven or an eight or maybe even something lower um, and make that where you focus your personal development. Make that where you focus your attention to be better because like attracts like, right? And we all want to attract motivational, positive, honest, organized, you know, confident, empowering women to our team and to our tribe, right? So then we need to make sure that that's what we're putting out there. Because definitely that's what we'll get back in return. And that's all I have for you guys. So I'm gonna open it up real quick in case anybody has any questions. That was a lot of information, a little bit of time. Um, what did you guys think? Did you like? Yeah. Good information? Yeah, did anybody have any questions? No? All right. Well, yeah, go for I was it. Gonna say, um I had to make a note to make sure to say, was sharing your story, I know I had an issue for a long time. I felt bad sharing the same pictures again. I'm like, oh gosh, they're hearing my same story and pictures. Update your pictures. I know we all take pictures. Go through your pictures and share your story, but share it with new pictures. Mm -hmm. um, that way, some of the people that might see your story again, it's new pictures, so they're going to reread it again. So that's something new I just started doing. Awesome tips. That's really good. I have a question. Um, yeah because I'm really bad at taking pictures. So you know that I don't like this. Now, do you guys do, um, like you have somebody take your pictures or do you do them for you? Like- do I you just, just do them in the mirror. Okay. Yeah. I know that sounds so ridiculous, but I'm like trying or to- Or like set it. it up. Like I sometimes will like set it up on something and then like stand back and do it and take the picture. Um, so most of the time, yeah, most of the time it's me. If I'm trying to take a picture like of a shirt I just got, then I'll get my hubby. Um, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get my seven-year-old. I'm like, hey, take a picture of mommy doing this pose. Yeah. And he actually loves it because he's like, mom, give me credit for that picture. Um, yeah. The kids so, do help more than the husband. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I got to get better at that because that's, and I have to be a little more um, open at showing pictures. I'm, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's, you guys do such a good job at that. Whenever I, Becky, I'm always like, oh my gosh, can I share your picture? Like, it's so ridiculous because it's true. Because when people see your picture, they're like, I, I know you, I've seen you. Wow, you look like that. So I know that that's huge. I just have to be open enough to share it. Yeah. And I know this sounds totally ridiculous, but um, you know, like I probably have some, friends and parents that I would teach for. So like even my principal kind of made a comment or like, he's like, well, you gotta like make sure you're okay with kids seeing these pictures. And I'm like, they're not like provocative. Yeah. But yet, you Just know, like you in a bathing suit. But you can do, you can do one with your clothes on. You don't have to like be showing your abs or anything right, like that. You right, know what I mean? Right. Or you can do just face pictures too. Like I compare face pictures sometimes from right. when I was pregnant before and right yeah. after the baby, you know, yeah. and it works. We're going to get I still off. Think, I feel like my face is still just as, <laughs> like my, <laughs> I get it like, I should take a picture of my neck. <laughs> like, Look at my neck. My neck is so thin. There you go. But 